It's that time again for another edition of Five Free Software. With so many bad programs out there, I will show you five free software that are actually great. All of these programs I show you are available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. As always, all of the software is well-trusted, free of any viruses or malware, and can perform many of the tasks of expensive software. Coming up next on Tech Gumbo. First up is the Brave Web Browser, which comes from the co-founder of the Mozilla Project and creator of JavaScript. They claim to have the fastest and safest browser available. On desktop, they say they're about two times faster than Chrome when loading major news sites. Brave also claims to remove intrusive internet ads and block website trackers. I've only been using for a short time and those claims appear to be true. Let's take a look around. If you hover your mouse over any open tab, it will give you a sneak peek without having to click into that tab. I'm currently on a site that usually shows ads. When you click on the Shields button, you can see stats for this site, and you can change the settings for each website, including whether you want to block ads, cookies, along with other settings. When you open a new tab, it will show you the overall stats for every site that you have visited, along with the time, and in the lower right corner, you can quickly access settings, bookmarks, and history. Brave supports built-in extensions, which you can get to by either selecting settings on a new tab page, or from any tab by going to the menu in the upper right hand corner and selecting it, and then select settings from the drop down menu. In the left pane, select extensions. These are the only extensions they have right now, but they say they'll be adding more in the future. While we're here, let's check out search. Brave currently has 19 search engines that you can choose from as your default. Of course, you all should know by now that DuckDuckGo is the best of these for privacy. Brave is currently available on Windows, Mac, and Linux. It even has an Android and iOS app. Next up is Audacity, which is a free open source digital audio editor that was launched in the year 2000. Since its release, it's been downloaded more than 100 million times. Audacity is one of the most popular free software you can get, so I won't spend a lot of time on it since most of you have used it and there are literally hundreds of tutorials online. To get started, you can go to File and then to Open to select your audio file, or you can just drag and drop from a folder on your computer. Audacity provides a ton of tools to edit your files, and there are a lot of built-in effects that you can choose from. If you're new to Audacity, if you select Help, there's a quick help guide and a full manual that you can use. Where you'll find the most help is on YouTube, with so many great tutorials that you should check out. You can get Audacity for Windows, Mac, and Linux. The next one is for you programmers out there. Visual Studio Code is a free and open source code editor from Microsoft. The words free and open source are not usually associated with Microsoft. This code editor has built-in support for JavaScript, TypeScript, and Node.js. If you need support for additional languages, they make it easy to add them into Visual Studio Code. When you have the program open, select the Extensions tab on the left. You could either try to find your language here from this long list, or you can type it right here in the search bar. And then select Install, then just wait for it to finish. When it's done, it's going to ask you to reload the page. So select Reload to activate. It's that easy. Now Ruby is installed. I currently have a small project from my college days opened up. What many of you will appreciate is the uncluttered user interface. And there's a preview pane here on the right, which makes it easy to skip around to different parts of your code. Visual Studio Code is available on Windows, Linux, and Mac. If you're looking for an easy to use video editor, then Shotcut may be for you. It's free, open source, and it's been in development since 2004. It supports 4K resolutions and just about every video format. It also has several audio features, including crossfading. This is a video editor I used to use, and I'll quickly show you how to use some of the features. It's missing some of the features of the paid video editors, but it is quick and easy to use. There are several ways of doing things with Shotcut, but I'll just show you some of the steps I used to use with files used for this video. First, you'll want to create a video and audio timeline. So down here in the timeline, left click, select add video track. 
Then select Add Audio Track. Go over to this area and left click and drag it up so you can see more of the timeline. Select Playlist. Drag a video file in. Then from the Media Player section, drag it down to the timeline. Then to move in another video file, do the same step as before. Drag it to the playlist and then drag it down to the timeline. One cool feature is you can create a video crossfade just by grabbing the second video file and dragging it to the left. I'll show you what that looks like. And to add an audio file, we'll do the same steps as before. Find an audio file, drag it to the playlist, and then drag it down to the audio timeline. And to shorten up the audio file on the timeline, go to the end of it, where you see the double arrows, and then drag to the left, and just snap it in. Even though this is an easy to use video editor, there is a slight learning curve. So if you need additional help, they do have a lot of video tutorials on their site and also on YouTube. Shotcut is available for Windows, Mac, and Linux. If you're a Mac or Linux user, there are instructions on this download page that you'll need to pay attention to when installing. This last one I'll show you is called Stellarium, which is a free and open source planetarium. Since only a few of you would be interested in something like this, I'll keep this really short. Unlike its competitors, Stellarium uses less of your system resources when it's running. It's used at planetariums and has cataloged more than 600,000 stars. This is not the easiest of software to use. Thankfully, they offer a user's guide on their site, which is 322 pages long. If this is something you're interested in, it's available for Windows, Linux, and Mac. That concludes this month's list. Thanks for watching. All links are in the description. Give this video a thumbs up if it was useful for you. Let us know in the comments if you use any great free software that you would like for me to share with others. Don't forget to click the subscribe button and bell notification icon for more from our free software series and other tech-related stuff from Tech Gumbo.